Thank you to Phil and Brenda. Uh, we love you guys. And yes, my husband is our senior pastor at our church, Cedar Park. So we're up to three services right now, which is awesome. But that means I listen to him three services in a row on a Sunday. And I love it. <laughs> so and I get to be the worship pastor, so he does have to listen to me sing. But um, so this actually, I wrote this message for you, honey. So no, <laughs> I have a message I have been waiting to speak to you. No, just kidding. No, I'm honored to be the, this is the first in-person service. Woo, go God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yay, I'm glad I get to celebrate with you guys. Um, so I know we've we'll been talking about emotional health, emotional um, healthy spirituality. So um, you know how when you've been asked to speak about something, then the Lord's like, oh, I'm going to test you in that. And, and so that's what I've been going through the last couple weeks. You know how sometimes you feel like you're on top of the world and you're like, I am, I am just, I am killing this life. And then other times you're like, this life is killing me. So that's kind of how this, um, this last little bit of my, li- my week was like. So I actually thought I'd start out with some really, um, three really practical tips for surviving life. Okay. So these, these are really, these are tested and tried. So number one, I would say to all of you who are unmarried, to um, find a spouse that is okay with you crying a lot. Okay? So tears. Um, my youngest daughter says that nothing beats a good cry. Right? Like just sometimes you just, you just, you just got to cry. And then you're like, I feel better. You know, and then marrying somebody who also can cry along with you. So that's really important. Number two, and I have two of these at my house. They are dogs. I call them my little puppies. Oh, my little Clover and Pippin. They're brown and white Labradoodles, and I love them so much because even when I'm a brat to everyone, they still love me. And they never hold grudges against me. They will just, when I'm sick, when I feel depressed, anxious, whatever, they are just right there. They are unconditional friends. Man's best friend, right? So puppies, um, and then the last, and this one is, um, this has always been true. This will always be true. I don't care who you are. Um, chocolate. Right? I mean, I don't know what it is. Like, my husband doesn't really love, who doesn't love chocolate? I mean, he doesn't really love chocolate. I don't know. I think that's crazy. But, man, and right lately, I've been eating the Trader Joe's um, chocolate. Some of our missionaries, I think from Belgium, I think gave us a huge block of chocolate. And so, I have just been enjoying that. So that's a little bit of like the practical tips of life. Um, And obviously, you can see a little bit into a window into my soul that I am completely dependent on Jesus. Like there's not a day that goes by that I have it. (laughs) Because life is hard and I am not a self-made woman. I am not independent. I am completely dependent on God and I'm not ashamed of that. And I'm not afraid to admit that. I need him very much. You know, some people might look at that as a crutch. Oh, you need the Lord. Oh, you need the Bible. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I do. Um, I have a favorite quote that I learned a couple years ago, a friend of mine, she's really great at calligraphy, and she made this art, and this is what it said. Maybe you've heard it before, but it says, if you get tired, learn to rest, not quit. I don't know why this was such news to me. I was like, wait, you can rest if you're tired? I could, like, go take a nap, or I could go for a walk, or I could eat chocolate, or hang out with my puppies. This was really life-changing. Maybe it's not to you. You're like, whoa, Sandy. (laughs) Um, But it's so, life is hard. And knowing that I can just take some time to rest, uh, I'm a 110% person, right? So everything, in fact, I have really short nails because I go at life like this, just like, boom, whether it's like laundry, dishes, like boxes, I don't care. And so like I have short nails, all these awesome long nails. I don't know how you do it. I couldn't get anything done. I would look good, but I wouldn't be able to do anything. Um, But I'm 110%. And so I'm either all in or all out, you know, and sometimes I feel like quitting. So I don't know if you've been there, and I don't mean like quit my life. I just mean like quit showing up, you know, like quit being available, quit um, showing up, serving people. Um, And this is exactly where Satan wants us, you know, and even to the point, and we've heard the statistics in our world, maybe it's affected your life personally or someone that you know, but we hear that the suicide rates are just off the charts. And this is so devastating. This is so tragic and sad. And and where does this idea come from? This thought that my life is so hopeless, it'll never change. I promise you, it will change. Things will look better probably in the morning, probably even tomorrow. You know, uh, you are never without hope. 
But this is exactly where the enemy wants us. The Bible tells us that Satan came to steal, to kill, and to destroy, right? So if, if, this is, if there's any of that happening, that is the work of Satan. But Jesus came that we would have life and life abundant. We are overcomers through Christ. We always have hope. We can overcome. We will not shrink back. Amen? Amen. Well, before we dig in, let's just open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for each person that you have gathered into this room today. I thank you for everyone who's watching online. God, I thank you that you have a word for us today. Lord, we quiet our hearts before you that we would hear that still, small voice. God, I just thank you for the good work that you're doing in each of us. And I pray that you would give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts that are willing and obedient to you. So we pray all this in the precious name of Christ. Amen. Amen. God is so in love with you. You are precious in his sight. You are his kids. And you know, God wants for us as his kids to walk in peace, to walk trusting him, knowing that he is working things out on our behalf, walking in faith when we say, I don't know where the finances are gonna come from, but I know that my God is a provider. I don't know how things are going to work out, but I know it's going to be good because God loves me. When we're trusting God for our daily needs, this is exactly where our Heavenly Father wants us to be. That's faith. And he looks down and he's like, my kids trust me. They trust me. And that really honors the Lord. So I hope you have your Bibles. This is chapel after all. So maybe you use your um, phone, which I use as well. But you can um, turn to the book of Matthew We're going to be looking at the red letters of Jesus. I love the red letters. I love um, the New Testament and just hearing exactly from Jesus' mouth what he said to his disciples, to us. I'm going to start in chapter 6 in verses 25 through 34. And you can go ahead and listen as I read it out loud. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. Okay, Jesus. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? That's a great question. (laughs) And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And I think you've probably heard verses 33 and 34 many times before. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. You know, what are you seeking after? Are you seeking after a career? Are you seeking after a relationship? Are you seeking after finances? Stop. Because God said, seek first his kingdom and all these things will be added to you. Does it mean you don't look for a job? Of course not. You're going to look for a job. (laughs) But first, you're going to seek God, right? You're going to seek his kingdom, his righteousness, first things first. God is first, and he will take care of everything that you need. He knows everything that we need. Um, How many of you know that it can be super easy to walk in our own strengths and our own abilities, right? You wake up, and you're like, I feel good. I have energy. I can do this day. And, you know, you get out of bed, and you're like, boom, boom, boom. Um, But it's the Bible says that we're supposed to keep in step with the Spirit. So that means there's um, another path for us. We We can walk in our own strength or we can walk according to the Spirit. It doesn't really matter what kind of a job you have. Um, whether you're in ministry or whether you're at a desk or, you know, you're a student, whatever it is that you're doing, everything should be done for the glory of God. And so you're not relying on your own strength. 
Even if you have, you say, I have the strength. And we all have abilities. We all have a measure of strength, which is given to us by God. But he wants us to keep in step with the spirit. And, you know, just like when you're driving your car, you know, when you're driving down the road and you see street signs, right? And they're usually uh, warning signs. It could be a stop sign or um, sometimes it's like curvy road ahead or icy roads. I love the ones where it's like deer crossing. You know, these are all warnings to us uh, that there's something coming ahead that we need to look out for. Well, you know, in our life, there are warning signs to us, whether we're walking in our own strength or whether we're walking in the spirit. And when, uh, when we're walking in our own flesh and our own strength, you know, I have found to my, in my life, the warning signs that pop up is um, anger, a critical spirit, um, easily offended, <laughs> just mad at everyone, you know, um, jealousy, like just all of these things that were like, ah, oh, that's so ugly. Why do I feel this way? Um, and these, when, when we start feeling this way throughout our day, this is a warning sign to us. Hey, you're walking in your own flesh. You know, what is meant to be for the glory of God? Suddenly I'm asking questions like, how does this make me look? What are people thinking about me? What am I gonna get out of this? And this is the flesh speaking. This is not the spirit of God. So speak, the Bible tells us that the fruits of the spirit all are, and I bet we can all quote it together, Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So these are also signs to us if you're walking with the fruits of the Spirit and you see gentleness in your life where you could have been really angry. Let's say somebody just like accidentally stepped on your glasses and you're like, dude, that's okay. Like it happens. I'll get another pair. Or um, somebody said something to you in a way that they really shouldn't have said it, but you're like, that's okay. I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. These are the fruits of the Spirit act, acting out in our life. When we love people who are unlovable, who are acting like brats, and we love them through it, hey, we've all been there, and we've all been the one on the other end of it too. But these are the fruits of the Spirit that we know, okay, this is not my flesh acting, because I know I wouldn't respond this way. If I act in love towards someone who's been unkind to me, that is a direct result of the fruit of the Spirit in my life. And so these are all signs to us. So think about that. Maybe you've been dealing with a lot of anxiety or worry or fear. That's because we're walking in our flesh. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. This happens to me all the time. And so I don't want you to feel like someday you're going to get to this level and you're never going to walk in the flesh again and you're just going to always walk in the Spirit. Um, just this last week this happened to me. I was super anxious about some things that were happening at work. I was like, People aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. This is da, 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 la, la, la. And I was angry. And I'm like, nor normally things that I could just kind of, it's going to be okay. It's not the end of the world. I was like, this is the end of the world. You know, and I was angry and critical spirit. And it's just like, Sandy, who's, who's, who, what power are you operating in right now? And it was a warning sign to me. So let that be um, something that speaks to you about your life. And bring those to God because he wants to help us walk in his spirit, right? And according to his spirit. So let's stay in the book of Matthew, but we're going to move over to chapter 11. And these are more of the words of Jesus. Um, this is verses 25 through 30. And I'll read it out loud. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then verse 28 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love that verse 28. Are you carrying a heavy load? You know, we're carrying burdens and we're walking and it's like, it's heavy and it's a burden. But Christ wants to exchange that burden. He says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. And he wants us as his kids not to be problem free, right? We all have problems, things that we have to walk through and face, but they shouldn't be weighing us down like we're just overcome you know life can be heavy and life is is heavy yes phil pastoring is is heavy and i know leading a school is heavy and it's easy for me to just 
just bow under the weight of it at times. But, but God's like, lift up your head, lift up your eyes, and see that I am still on the throne. I am still making a way. God is in control, and even and especially when it seems like everything is at the end. Come on. Come on. Day three is coming, and Jesus is going to rise from the grave. He's going to do it. That's so good. So God wants us to bring our desires and our needs to him. He wants to exchange our burdens for his. So if you're in the room today, go ahead and look around you at your friends, your fellow classmates. If you're online, maybe just look at whoever's near you, your family. Think about your coworkers. Yeah, such beautiful people. It's so good to see each other in the same place. You know, we're all on a journey um, together, separately, of finding meaning and purpose for our own lives. You know, if you're single, you're tackling hurdles like, um, who am I going to marry? Or maybe you're wondering, where should I live after college? Or um, what will I do for a living? Am I going to have kids? How many kids am I going to have? Maybe you're older and you're like, when am I going to retire? Um, how do we make decisions like this? And how do we know that we've made the right decision? And I think these questions often can be the source of such anxiety and worry. They can just weigh us down. What if there's no one out there for me? There is, okay? I can virtually guarantee you there is someone for you. God's timing is perfect. He puts the desires that you have in your heart. He knows what you need. He loves you. So I've noticed something about people your age. And I say, uh, and believe it or not, I used to be your age a really long time ago. I was your age. <laughs> I, I know how it feels. But um, when I say your age, I mean like teen years to like late 20s. There's something about you guys that um, you love to watch other people's lives. And I kind of had to do like some soul searching like, because, you know, my girls, oh, my goodness, the stuff. And then like, what are you watching? And then I was like, well, what was I like when I was 20? And, oh, yeah, like I remember um, – you know, it was Jennifer Aniston and, and Brad Pitt. Like, are they gonna, what's gonna happen with them? Yes, that's how long ago it was. <laughs> that was like so long ago. <laughs> oh my word. Um, so I, I get it. It's just, it's kind of a season you're in, but you know, you love to watch influencers such as vloggers, bloggers, Instagrammers, TikTokers. Everything has to end in an er, whatever it is. Um, we like to look, um, and it is fun. It's fun to watch people, like my girls would be like, so-and-so had a baby. I'm like, who's so-and-so? Oh, it's somebody that we don't even know. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, but it's good to think about in, in relation to these other people. Like, what kind of person do you want to be? You might think, well, what's my life going to look like? And that's why who you follow is so important. But the truth that we have to grasp is that that is not reality. Okay, what you're seeing, what you're watching isn't reality. Even me standing here today, I am here in the flesh and blood. I am really here. I am talking to you, but I have written out every word that I'm going to say. This is rehearsed. This is prepared. You don't even really, you're seeing like a sliver of me, right? So my husband earlier in the first service, of the, my, all my girls are here. And I'm like, they really know me. Like they know me when I'm angry. They know me when I'm happy. They know my crazy laugh, what I look like in the morning, um, blah, blah, blah. It's, I, this is what I look like in the morning. I mean, I'm not even wearing any makeup. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so what I'm saying is that all of these things that we view online, they're fun, they're interesting, but they're not real, right? It's just, it's a glimmer of reality. It's just an unrealistic view. It's not ever going to be, you know, what normal people look like in their lives. Think about like a Hallmark movie, Disney what about these guys? They're like, everything is, you know, wrapped up in a little bow. That's why we love to watch them. It's like, oh, I just know everything's going to turn out great. But life is not fair. The reality of life is it's not fair. It's not equal for everyone. It's not always happily ever after. Life doesn't always make sense in the natural world. I'm sorry if that's depressing. You know, it's just, but it's reality. It's good. The earth is aging, it's fallen. It's sinful. You're sinful. I'm sinful. The world is sinful. You know, and earlier I mentioned sometimes feeling that desire just to quit showing up, to quit life, to quit being available. You know, and, and we talked about, like, where does that come from? Like, that comes from the pit of hell. Hopelessness, wanting to isolate, being away from community. This is not God's idea. This is the enemy's idea. He wants us to be alone, discouraged, um, isolated, um, so we know that. And I think a lot of the emptiness that many people feel 
comes from trying to attain something that isn't real. You know, we look at maybe someone's uh, married life and we're like, what if my married life doesn't look like that? Or what if your married life doesn't look like that? And then you think, well, what's wrong with me? But it's not reality. So just be careful with the things that you're seeking out and the things that you're watching and the voices that you allow to speak over you. You know, everything leaves an impression. And I know maybe you're not a blue check influencer, but everyone, you're influencing people and you are being influenced by those around you. And that's not a bad thing. That's, we're all influencers and we're all influenced. And so we just need to keep that in mind so we can devour the pages of God's word instead of devouring the pages of someone's Instagram story, right? We know so much about so many people, but what do we know about God? What do we know about God's family? Who is connected to who? And, oh, that's their son, and that's his daughter. Oh, my word, that's the one. They walked through the Red Sea together. Oh, that's the same one. Wow, you know, like, love his word. Um, Wait on the Lord and trust in him more than we trust in people, you know, even the ones that we love the most, even our, the dearest ones to us, we can't put our trust in people. You know, people, we're all just, we're, we're human, we're, we are fallible, we're not infallible. You know, so when you um, place all of your hope, all of your trust, and all of your worth in Christ, all of your value in him, you cannot be disappointed. Remember that old song, um, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, even those that we love so much, that are good people, we trust when all of our hope and all of our value and all of our worth is placed in Christ alone, we cannot be disappointed. I love that. That's amazing. What a place of peace. What a word of hope. Um, it was about a year ago today that I was flat on my back because um, last in, in December, over a year ago, I had ruptured a disc in my lower back. And um, it was very terrible and very painful. Um, I am very much better today. I did end up having surgery on my back, which was scary. Um, but, and I still have a little bit of nerve pain that I'm dealing with. But that was um, a really difficult journey for me because I was on my back and, you know, I we lead a church together. We have kids. We have ministry. We have all these things that um, to do. And I couldn't do anything. And nothing would touch the pain, like, no amount of pain thing, pain pills. I was I took so much Motrin and Tylenol, and and I hated it. It was stressful because I'm like it's killing my gut, you know. And I just would tell God, you know what, God, if this is hurting my stomach, that's on you. <laughs> I mean, I did. I was like, this is, a, you know, God, you can touch me right now and heal me, but you didn't. So I have to take this Motrin now, and so you have to protect my stomach. <laughs> we had a lot of conversations. Um, I had a lot of people praying for me. And obviously, I'm standing here today, but um, the, the things that God taught me in that season was, where is my hope? Where is my value? You know, and it made me think about, um, like, picture with me uh, somebody who is a quadriplegic, let's say. They're unable to do anything for themselves. In fact, everything that they need done has to be done for them. They can't feed themselves. They can't clean up, up after themselves. They can't even speak. And then picture somebody who is on the mission field in Africa and they're serving and they're preaching and they're feeding people and they're pouring out their life for Christ. So of these two stories, which is most, which person is most valuable to God? Is it the person who can't do anything for themselves or is it the person who's pouring out their life on the mission field? Well, I would say to you that both are equally, of equal value to God. Because God loves people. He doesn't love me or love you because of what you can do for him. Because of your gifts or your abilities or your strength. God loves you because you, have, you are made in the image of Christ. And this was something that I had to learn on a very personal level. Just sucking the carpet on my floor. Like, God, I know you love me right now. And every ounce of strength that I have is given to me from you.
And if you want me to do things, to to go back and lead worship or to be able to stand here and speak, Lord, you are going to have to give me the strength. I can't do it on my own, but God, I trust you. And being able to say, God, I love you and I know you love me even when there are just tears running down your eyes is something I believe really blesses Jesus. When you're in the middle of your crisis, when you're in the middle of your pain and you could quit, you could give up. But instead, you choose faith, and you choose trust, and you choose faithfulness to God. He will, he will bless that. And that blesses him. So I got so close to my heavenly father. You know, and maybe for you, some of you, maybe you're faced with a diagnosis, and you're like, how am I going to live my life with this? You know, maybe it is physical, or maybe it's emotional or mental. There's things, there's hurdles in your life. And you recognize, even though you're young, that there are limitations to your life. There are limitations to your body. But you know what? That is beautiful to God. And he can work with anything you bring him. And I love the songs that we sang this morning. All of my strength, I can't remember which song it was, but everything I am, God, I give it to you. Everything, Lord. Use it for your glory. Use it for your purposes. So where is your hope? Is it in you? Where is your worth? Is it in your strength of what you can do for God? Where is your value? And make sure that it is on that solid rock, that no matter what changes or shifts happen around you, you are safe. God's kingdom is unshakable. God will never fail you. You cannot be disappointed when your hope is in him, when your faith is in him, when you are depending on him with everything, when you can say, God, nothing looks like I thought it would look, but I trust you. I can't see two feet in front of you, but God, I know you're with me and you're gonna work things out. When we speak to our own heart and we say, look up, Get your eyes off of the problem and look to Jesus. He is with you. You know, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, just as we come to a closing here today, it says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. Isn't it amazing how many times the Bible says, don't worry? And I think that's a good indicator that God knew that we would worry, but that there's a better way. There's a way of peace that he has for us. You know, we can walk through a whole day of worry and stress, or we can walk away of peace. And I'm going to tell you, there's going to be some days that you blow it, and you, you walked through, you, you were um, not trusting God the whole day. And there'll be some days that you hit it out of the park. Um, either way, you just say, God, um, thank you for today. And you say, I messed up, but I want to do better tomorrow. Help me. Give me strength. And forgive yourself. Um, God has good for you. Um, Maybe you guys have heard this in the scriptures as you're reading the Bible. It'll say um, Selah or interlude. Maybe you've seen that in the Psalms. And we're led to believe that this is like a musical term. Or maybe Selah, interlude means like let's pause. Let's take a rest here. Let's wait. So Psalms 46 um, verses 10 through 11 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Interlude. So we wait. And we trust. Even in the middle, we can have peace. We can have joy. Complete peace, complete joy. That's a gift from God. So let's insert the interlude, the Selah, into our lives. Let's insert the Lord into our lives. Wait on him. The Bible says that those that wait on the Lord, he will renew their strength. When you feel weak, when you feel tired, don't quit. Rest. Rest in the Lord. The way to true and lasting peace is found in Jesus Christ. So um, if you're taking notes or if you want to just tuck this away in your mind, a way, just a response that I have in mind for, for us um, over this next season to think about is number is three things. Number one, make the Lord the center of your world. Maybe you realize that he's kind of been the sideshow, you know, and maybe social media has been the center or even your schooling or family or friends, and, he, and God's kind of been off to the side, but let's bring him to the center. Bring him to the center of your world. Number two, we talked about operating in our flesh or operating according to the spirit. But let's be mindful that we're operating according to the spirit and pay attention to the warning signs, right? 
as they're coming, if there's anger, if there's worry, doubt, fear, jealousy, these are signs to us. And number three, let's practice the Selah. Let's insert the interlude in our days. Wait on him, enjoy his presence, linger in his word. Would you bow your heads and pray with me today? God, we thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. Thank you that that perfect peace dwells inside each of us. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here today, that we have felt your spirit speaking to us through our times of worship, through your word. God, I thank you that your word truly is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, you are so faithful to us. God, I thank you for each person that you have drawn here today, that you would do that deep work of showing us um, things that we need to get rid of, things that are not producing peace in our life, and God, that you would help us to walk along that straight and narrow path that leads to salvation, Lord. Give us victory in our daily lives. Help us, when we get overwhelmed, God, to turn our eyes to you, to praise you, to let, just like we sang about, to let praise be our victory and to silence our enemies. We pray all these things in your mighty name. Amen, amen.